G'day guys, Matt here from Not In The Manual. Today I've got a video on tyres. Now, I had to replace my tyres prematurely on this car and I'll, I'll talk to you about that in a second, but I really learned a lot about tyres and I thought I had a pretty good knowledge of tyres, but EVs, you know, throw another element into the equation with tyres. So what I thought I would do today is explain to you the differences between uh, standard tyres and EV specific tyres. So <clears throat> here in Australia, if you've got the 18 inch wheels, there's not a lot of choice. So I ended up getting and or deciding to use the uh, Michelin E Primacy tyres. Now, they're probably not the best choice for, for someone overseas because you're probably going to have a few more options. But here in Australia, there's not much choice with the 18 inch wheels. So <laughs> that's what I went through. So some main things you need to think about consider with tires, and that is economy, uh, performance. So performance, I mean, you know, acceleration and braking and cornering, and uh, then how quiet the tires are. So noise levels. And with an EV, noise levels are a lot more important. So we'll have a look at how the tire manufacturers manage that. Now, I had to replace the tires uh, at 25,000 kilometers, which is pretty early. Uh, it's very premature. Um, I was expecting, you know, 35, 40,000 kilometers out of the first set of tires. Um, but what you need to remember with, uh, it's not just electric ve vehicles, but electric vehicles make it a little bit worse because you have a bucket load of torque available to you right right off to on takeoff and um, that that's going to to wear out your tires a bit bit sooner you get very used to that and you start accelerating a bit harder than you normally did in a petrol vehicle so with the rear wheel drive electric vehicle like this tesla standard range plus you need to remember that everything is going through the back wheel so um, the majority of your braking is regenerative braking so as I lift my foot off that accelerator now, the car is braking and it's doing that through the rear wheels. So not only do you have acceleration through the rear wheels, you also have a lot of braking through your rear wheels. So you're going to naturally wear out the rear wheels faster. So what happened, my story, why I had to change the tyres early. So back at the end of 2021, I had someone plough into the side of my car they scraped the side, uh, the back rear left wheel, and the wheel was be able to, was able to be fixed, um, and but the tire got replaced as a precaution. And I got told at the time Tesla was short on tires, so I got supplied a tire without the memory uh, memory foam, without the sound dampening foam, and I was told that was the only difference. And I thought, oh, well, I can live with that, no problem. Uh, at that stage I thought that the sound dampening foam made very little difference and I knew that it created issues uh, with tyre repair. So repairing punctures that foam causes a bit of a few, few issues for them to get the uh, the tyre repair to seal uh, when they put tyre plugs in. So I thought that's not a big deal um, and at the time I thought the tyres had been rotated and then I sort of just yeah, forgot about it. And I think that's the thing you need to remember with these electric vehicles is you're not taking them in for regular servicing. So they're not seeing a tire rotation uh, very often. So even if you're getting your ice vehicle service, getting the oil changed um, every six months, you might take it in for a service, depending on how many kilometers you do. And they would do a tire rotation at the time, or at least check the tread wear on all four tires and rotate if needed. So uh, you're missing out on that with electric vehicles. So that's something that becomes your responsibility to keep track of. So roughly every 10,000 kilometers, you'll need to do a tire rotation on your, your Model 3. And I think the same will go for the, for the Model Y and, and, and um, you know, even the, the performance or long range versions. Um, yeah, you're going to, to wear those tires out a bit quicker still. Yeah, so that, that's something you need to keep an eye on. And I, I let that slip. And I started getting a warning coming up on the car 
uh, telling me that the, the tire tread depth between the front and the rear was too great and I needed to inspect the tires for, uh, for wear and uh, possible rotation or replacement. So the car has something pretty cool uh, to be able to work that out. Now, the majority of cars these days, modern cars, have uh, wheel speed sensors. And so they're just like a little mag pickup sensor reading off some um, notches on a, on a, uh, a shaft or a, uh, you know, a flange or something there that, that has the little castellations and the sensors read off the high and the low points there. So they turn on and off, on and off and pulse a certain amount of times per revolution of that, that uh, shaft or flange. And uh, initially that uh, was, you know, set up for ABS sensors uh, and then it became used for traction control as well to sense speed difference. So it would sense one wheel was spinning and the others weren't turning. Um, it would bring the brake on on that wheel and uh, transfer the power to, to the other rear wheel or the, one of the other four wheels if it was an all-wheel drive. And so that helped with the traction control systems. So what it's also used for now, Tesla are using that for um, the, just, just to monitor the rotational speed of each wheel. And if it senses something too great, it knows that it, it would be a, an issue with uh, a tread wear because it's monitoring tire pressure. So it, it knows whether the tire pressure is okay. So it knows that it's not because it's a flat tire giving you a, a rotational difference in speed. So those, those wheel speed sensors are actually yeah, yeah, really helpful and Tesla's using them uh, to, the, to its full potential. You know, I don't know what else they will use them for down the track. But uh, yeah, it's mainly looking at the difference in speed between the front and the rear wheels. And so to give you that little warning. And there may not be an issue, but uh, it's gonna give you the warning and it's prompting you to check your tires anyway. So you can actually clear that in the uh, service menu in the car. There's wheel and tire configuration and in there you can reset that um, to say, yes, you've done a rotation and you won't have that warning now for another 10,000 kilometers. So uh, in another 10,000 kilometers, it's going to have a look at that rotational difference between the front and the rear tires. Again, start looking at that. If it's over a certain point, I think it's one and a half millimeters uh, difference in tread wear between the front and the rear. So it's that sensitive uh, that, that will cause the, this error to come up. So I had this error come up and then I went and checked my tires and were found out that my rear right hand tire was worn down below the tread wear marks. And I've got some photos of that I'll put up here now. So that was um, going to cause me an issue because the other three tires still had about four millimeters on them. So these tires start with about six and a half millimeters of tread, which is a bit less than your standard um, car tires um, that have sort of uh, seven and a half to nine millimeters roughly of, of tread depth to begin with. So uh, EVs have less tread to begin with. So it's even more, even more reason to, to, to monitor your tread wear and rotate your tires. So I couldn't just replace that one tire because I would be going, uh, putting a new tire with six and a half mil tread in against with three other tires that had still had four millimeters of tread left on them. So uh, they, they still had a fair bit of life left in them. I might've got to that 35,000 kilometer mark, but in the Tesla manual, they say if the tread depth is going to be more greater than I think one and a half millimeters, um, I'll double check that and, and overlay it if I'm wrong, but um, the, tread, the tread difference was going to be too much anyway, so I had to replace all four. And so what I did was uh, put in a service request with Tesla, asked them how much for a new set of tires. Uh, they came back and quoted me and it was two and a half thousand dollars. So I had a look at that and $500 of that was going to be uh, fitting of the tires I think that was 250 bucks, um, which is different because you go to a tire place and the fitting is included with the tire price. So Tesla do that differently. They throw this um, large amount of labor cost on top 
And then they also wanted $250 for a wheel alignment, which is a lot more than you pay at a, at a tire place. So that large price, you know, forced me to, to sort of have a look and, and work out what alternative options I have. Plus, I was a bit annoyed that the tire they supplied me during the accident repair wasn't an EV specific tire or a Tesla, a Tesla tire. So it was just a standard Michelin Pilot Sport 4. So I was pretty surprised that Tesla supplied me a non-EV tire. Yeah, I think you'll you'll agree when you when we have a look and compare that particular tire because I kept that tire and then one of one of the the original tires the car came with, I kept them and we'll do a comparison of those and you'll too you'll be scratching your head why Tesla supplied it to me as well because it's very different to the Tesla tire. So that was something that, that that sort of forced me to do a bit more research on tires. And once I did a bit more research, I realized that, yeah, you, you really do need to fit EV specific tires. Let's go and have a look at the tires and I'll go through some of the design features of the EV tires and what differences there are over the standard tire. Okay, so we've got the two tires set up here. Uh, what I did was cut both tires across, so we get to have a look at a cross section of the construction. So these are both Pilot Sport 4 tires. Uh, this was the tire that the car came originally from, from the factory. So it is a Tesla version of the Pilot Sport 4, and it is a T1. So the T1 has the sound dampening foam, and the T0 has no sound dampening foam, but is the same tire. Um, it's just a standard old uh, Pilot Sport 4, which I'm sure is a great tire in a non-EV, but you know, they're not so great on an EV. And we're gonna go through that uh, in this video. We're going to look at the cross section. We're gonna start at the bead, work our way up, look at the uh, sidewall, and then we're gonna have a look at the tread. And we're not gonna get into uh, anything too technical with tire design. We're gonna brush on some tire design basics, but we're going to just look at the difference between an EV specific tire and a non EV tire. So that's what we're going to look at. Now a common theme today with this is going to be efficiency. And that a lot of the features of the EV specific tire revolve around efficiency. So what, what we're talking about with efficiency is delivering the energy from your battery uh, through to the motor inverter, then to your electric motor through the gearbox, the step-down gearbox, out through your drive shafts, out to the wheel, through your tyre and to the road. Now, it would be a shame to be very efficient with all that energy up to the, when you get to the tyre here and for your tyre to just go and waste a lot of that. So what we want to try and do is make this tyre as efficient as possible. This tyre is your link to the road. It's where everything you do uh, goes. It connects you to the road. It's there for your safety. It's there for handling. It's there for efficiency because wasted energy uh, is often converted to heat. And you do not want your tire getting too hot because your sidewalls can blister. They can, you know, you can start to deconstruct the tire by overheating it. All the tires have a heat rejection rating. You know, these, both of these tires have a pretty good heat rejection, or, you know, heat tolerance. Now EVs are super efficient. So an ICE vehicle relies, um, to stop, it relies on friction brakes. Now friction brakes, dissipate your kinetic energy as heat. So you have your brake pads clamp on the disc, they generate bucket loads of heat, and that is just lost energy, it's wasted. It's, it's given off into the air, uh, you know, absorbed out through the air, and it's wasted. With an electric vehicle, when you regenerative brake, that energy is being, kinetic energy is being transformed with your motor, which becomes a generator, and feeds that energy back and is stored into your battery to be used again, and that's free energy. Well, it's not totally free, but it's energy that is normally wasted that your EV now harnesses and puts back into the battery. Okay, I just wanna run through some tire specification basics before we get look at the construction of the tire. So this is the Tesla T1 tire. So we know it's a Tesla EV specific tire. It's got the sound dampening foam because it's a T1, not a T0. We have the basic specifications of the tire here, 235, which is the width, 45, which is the profile, which is a percentage of the 235. We have the tire construction, which is a radial. Um, 
radial tyre construction. It's designed to fit on an 18 inch rim. 98Y is the load and speed rating. So we have 98, which is 750 kgs per tyre. And we have Y, which is 300 kilometers an hour speed rating. And then over here, we have the wear rating, the traction rating, and the temperature rating. So the wear rating, the higher the number, the longer the tread lasts. So if you're comparing one tire to another, uh, traction rating A or double A uh, is pretty common. Temperature rating of A uh, means it's, you know, they're all pretty high ratings having the A. Okay, so let's have a bit, bit of a closer look here at the cross section of these two tires. So here on the left, we have the uh, non-Tesla approved Pilot Sport 4. So um, it's a non, has a lot of the, uh, doesn't have a lot of the EV specific features. And then we have the EV specific Tesla approved tire on the right hand side. So having these side by side, we're gonna be able to see some of the differences are very obvious and some of them are not so obvious. So if we start off at the bead and we'll work our way around, uh, then we can talk about the tread here as well. So it's all nice, that's why I've got the tires set up this way because it's, so it's all nice and clear to, to point these features out to you. So if we start at the B, we have a multi-strand steel cable. Both tires are the same there. Um, they look like it's the same diameter cable, same number of strands, nothing, nothing special there. But where it differs is with EV tires, um, specific tires, they try and make this a bit more of an interference fit, um, which does make them a little bit harder to fit. Um, if there are any tire fitters out there, maybe you could comment. But it's designed to make that a bit more of an interference. So to increase the friction between this bead and the rim. So with all the bucket loads of torque you have from zero RPM, uh, we need to make sure that that tire doesn't slip. So when that slips, uh, it's going to get have friction, it's going to get hot, and it's going to do some damage to your tire. So we don't want that slipping. So from the bead area, we can move up into the sidewall. And this is where the first obvious difference uh, is, is, uh, is shown. You can just see in the basic um, material, the meat in this sidewall here is beefed up. It's been strengthened with extra material. But it's not just the extra material. It's also the shape of the sidewall. If we have a look here at the non-EV one, we can see it has a nice radius you know, uh, curve here a nice soft transition, whereas the EV specific tire makes the most of this extra material here in this section and then just has a straight line up to the tread. So uh, that is a much stiffer arrangement here, having that straight um, stiffened up sidewall. And that has a number of benefits. A stiffer sidewall is going to be able to transmit the power here more efficiently and with less distortion. And also, when you think about cornering and uh, you have these lateral forces trying to bend and flex the tire. And this sidewall is the foundation to support the rest of this tread during those forces. So when you're steering, when you turn this wheel in, you know, you have these pretty strong lateral forces trying to bend and flex that tire. And this would be more really noticeable with steering response. So if you look at the sidewall of this tire, that is pretty easy to, to bend and flex and move around. Whereas we come over to here and it's much, much harder to, to move that around. And so, you know, it has a lot more uh, lateral stiffness and, and really supports that tire quite well. So when you're steering, what you'll notice is steering response. So how fast the car reacts to your steering inputs. So this tire here on a heavy EV, you know, with that low down uh, heavy battery, um, would react slower than this tire that is much stiffer. So that's good for performance, safety, um, and you know, it just, it just feels much nicer to have that, the, the car respond. But it's not as comfortable as, you know, a tire here that, you know, is, gives that little bit of sponginess, a little bit of comfort. Now with the sidewall, we can see there is some extra material in there, but what the tire manufacturers also do is they use a, a mix of different compounds to, to make that material less, uh, less likely to absorb energy. So better at transmitting, the, you know, transmitting that power through. So you'll see here in the sidewall, um, you know, they'll, they'll use different material, but also 
What you can actually see signs of here is the nylon um, cord um, that forms a part of the carcass of the tyre or the skeleton of the tyre. And you have the, um, the belts that sort of run through the tyre to, to give it its strength. So we can start to see those cords here. If these sidewalls absorb energy, or any part of the tyre that's absorbing energy, converts that energy to heat. So this sidewall, when it heats up, you can see those nylon cords going through there. Well, these plies in here can separate and blister when it gets too hot, and that can cause your tyre to fail. It affects the integrity of your sidewall here. And it's another reason why keeping your tyres at the correct uh, air pressure is critical as well. A deflated tyre actually deforms and starts absorbing a lot of energy. As we move up into the tread, you can start to see some of the steel belting, and there is some other belting layered there, uh, you know, some, some different materials there, aramid and, and things there as well. But for the sidewall, we can see it's nice and stiff. So that's basically it for the, for the sidewall there. We, we, uh, the basics of that is just making this tire stiff enough to, to cope with the extra weight of the EV. So when we move up into the tread here, um, the main difference, the first part where I want to start here is the tread depth. Looking here when tread depth, we're talking about the bottom of this groove here up to the top of the tread. Now with an EV specific tire, they usually end up being about six to six and a half millimeters as opposed to a non-EV specific tire, which they tend to be around that eight millimeter mark. So there's a bit of extra tread on there and having less tread is more efficient. It lowers your rolling resistance, but it's also reducing the weight on the outside of the tire. So the benefit to that is requiring less energy to accelerate that tire up to speed. And it's the same difference if we're going from say an 18 inch tire like this up to a 19 or a 20 inch size wheel, um, we're putting more weight further out. And the basics of this is that weight further out has a lot more leverage. Think of the, the weight coming out from the center of the wheel, drawing a straight line, a nice radius, radial line, out to this point. If we come out to here, we've then got more leverage to resist the motion of that tire. And the inertia of that weight is much harder to rotate when it's out at a bigger radius. And that's the basics of it. So it's accelerating that extra weight up to speed that costs you more energy. And that's why the bigger diameter uh, wheels will, will be less efficient. And the non-EV version tires uh, could be, it's not always the case, but they could be uh, slightly, have, have slightly more weight out at that point. But it's more about the, the tread design and the rolling resistance um, at that point. <coughs> so that's, that's one thing you can see there. Now, what you can also start to see here is some of the steel belts in through here. Now they are layered, I'll try and uh, post a picture over the top of this, I'll layer a picture over the top, just showing a cross section of some belts so you can see that a bit clearer. And the material that they are made out of and the way they are layered affects the rolling resistance and the rigidity of the tire and you know really affects the, the contact patch which we'll talk about uh, in, in a minute. So, you know, that's another area that, that's pretty critical and, and tire manufacturers use different material for those belts. There's aramid belts, there's steel belts, but it can also be way, the way that those belts are layered and how they are finished off here at the edges. Um, there's a few little techniques that they use there. What we're gonna do next is move down here and just have a look at the tread and some, diff some, some features there that we look at. So we spoke about contact patch. Now, contact patch, we're talking about a, a, a surface there, maybe the size of the, your hand, very similar to the size of your hand when you put it on there, uh, on, on average. And that's your connection with the road. So you wanna make the most of that surface area. So what some of that material does in the belts is ensures even pressure across that contact patch. So you're transmitting, trying to transmit uh, that, that energy between the two as even as possible. You don't want to have more in the middle and less on the outside or vice versa. So there are a number of reasons that that is good, but it is mostly to do with 
tread wear and tread life. And obviously the size of that contact patch is going to uh, decide how much traction you have as well. So what we're going to talk about now are the parts of the tread and we're going to work our way across from the, from the shoulder of the tire and it's, it's grooves, it's blocks here on the side. So we have some lateral grooves here as well. Um, we also have some little features here called sipes. Now sipes, you can see them over the rest of the, you know, you can see them on these tread ribs. Um, you can see them there. Now they are grooves that don't run the full depth of the tire tread. And what their main purpose is, is to give you some, some more traction by you know gripping into into um, the, the texture of the road they increase the surface area of contact so when they open up as they roll over they increase your sur surface area and grip but another main feature of sipes is to push water away from this tread so we're talking about wet weather performance there so these sipes serve a, a, a couple of functions so as this tire rolls over water some of it is vaporized by the tread, just the weight coming in at that, that sheer force of the tread rolling over the water. Some of that water is vaporized, but the rest of the water needs to be pushed away from the tread. Otherwise, the tread will start rolling over on sitting on top of the water and it will aquaplane and it will be like driving on ice. So a lot of these features with the tire are designed to just get rid of that water. So you have some lateral grooves over here in the side of the tread. You have these sipes used to evacuate water. And then you have the sipes here used to push water into these grooves. So these grooves here are designed to store the water. So as the water is pushed away from the tread, it's designed to be stored in these sections here. Now, if we look over at this tire, its grooves are a bit smaller, but the tread is slightly wider. This tire has a higher traction rating than this one. So you want to have more tread in contact with the road at the one time and to give you that extra traction, but it's a trade-off. So the water grooves here uh, are actually a little bit smaller and they do, you do sacrifice that. If you want to make these ribs wider, these tread uh, ribs wider, you're going to sacrifice the area you have to dissipate the water. So with this tyre, um, you know, we've got some decent grooves here to, to uh, store water and as the tyre rolls away. So you don't see those big lateral grooves here. And I've got a couple of videos here that I'll overlay. I've got my wife's and my daughter's car, and you can see they've got normal passenger car tires, uh, pretty standard looking ones. They have a lot of sipes and a lot of lateral grooves so that you actually end up with tread blocks in the center of your tire as well. So the EV tires, that's why they don't have all those lateral grooves. And so what you're doing is maximizing the surface area in contact with the road to give you some traction. <clears throat> and you just don't need all those lateral grooves to help get rid of the water, just with the extra weight of the EV. So over here, these sipes that I pointed out to you earlier, you can see that this tire doesn't have them. So that's just giving a bit of extra grip in this area. It's getting rid of some water out of these grooves. And also by having a small, a small opening here and then moving out into a larger opening, that can help with noise. Having the, the water come out through here from a small opening to a big opening actually changes that, that noise and, and helps, helps uh, bring, this, bring the volume down. And talking about noise, we'll segue into that. If you look at these lateral grooves here and these tread blocks, you'll notice from one side of the tire to the other, they look pretty random in their width, and you'd be, right, you'd be right in assuming that. So imagine if we had lateral grooves right across the tire, all hitting the road at the same time. That's going to be pretty noisy. And that's what a lot of the larger SUV four-wheel drive tires have. They have big lateral grooves for shedding mud and gripping on rocks and, and uh, everything there. But on a flat road, they don't have as much traction because they don't have as much tread in contact with the road at the one time. But they're great off-road. They're great to give you traction off-road in that uh, uneven terrain. And they're designed to uh, shed mud off the tires as well, just to maintain traction. So we, we, we don't have that, you know, we don't have those big noisy grooves in here. But we also don't want these to line up. Um, if you have these grooves lining up, 
it will create some resonances there with sound and, and make the tyre very noisy. So by offsetting these grooves from each other and designing the shape of these grooves actually makes the tyre uh, a bit quieter. It's not just the fact of these side grooves here or lateral grooves here not lining up, it's also the width of these blocks here as well is randomised for noise. And what some EV tyres do, I think it's on the Hankook ones, maybe, I'm not sure, but they put some ribs inside these uh, grooves here. And they're designed to change the way noise travels around the tyre as well. And those grooves help sort of break up that sound. And uh, the same way, you know, these, these, these sipes here do, um, it's all about reducing uh, or changing the frequency of that sound or reducing the decibels generated. The other way we reduce noise with the EV tyres, um, if the tread isn't enough, you can see up here we have this sound dampening foam. So this sound dampening foam, or sound deadening foam, whatever you want to call it, I accidentally sometimes call it memory foam, but you can see it's a, a polyurethane foam. Now it's not that dense, but that is enough attached to this tread to change the, the uh, frequency of the sound, um, to, to, to bring that noise level down. But the downside to this uh, sound dampening foam is when you need to repair a puncture. So if you have a nail go through here and then you take that tire in to get a plug put in, sections of this foam need to be taken out and see these uh, tracks of glue? Those white sections are st uh, strips of glue attaching the foam to the tire. They need to be scrubbed away and there is a lot of preparation that needs to be done to ensure that that tyre plug holds and doesn't leak. So you can then reattach the, the uh, foam over the top, so it's, but it is a lot of extra work for the tyre the plug and there is a chance that it just may not work. It may not be a successful repair because there is a lot of prep to be done. So possibly that's going to cost you more to repair and maybe you know, wherever you take it to be repaired, they just may not be able to be uh, have a successful repair. And also, if you're carrying a tyre repair kit for yourself for emergencies and you're trying to fix it uh, on the side of the road, you know, those temporary repair kits are, are less likely to be successful as well. The other issue we have with this sound dampening foam is the liquid sealant. If you have the liquid sealant in the tyre, you're trying to repair a puncture, it actually won't get through this foam the foam will just absorb it and it won't get to the puncture. So I, I think uh, yeah, my new tyres, the Michelin e primacies don't have this sound dampening foam. And I don't think the tyres are overly louder than this, but it is a different tread design to this tyre as well. And then, you know, maybe next set of tyres I get, there'll be a few more options for me as far as EV specific tyres go, other than the Tesla, Tesla approved tyres. And I'll be able to get one with, mem uh, there we go, calling it memory foam again, sound dampening foam. So I think I've, I've covered everything here that I wanted to do. We're mainly just looking at the, the, uh, the differences between these two tyres. I'm not, I've, I've covered some tyre some design basics. Oh, you can also see the wear ribs here. So you can see I did have a bit of tread left on, on this tyre. But once you wear down the tyre below a certain level, these sipes may even be non-existent or barely there. So your water shedding ability is going to be reduced on a worn tyre. So uh, critical you get the, the, the tyres replaced um, when, they're, when they're close to being worn. So uh, it's very good that the, that the Tesla have design, uh, decided to use the systems already available in the car to give you a warning of when your tyres are worn. Okay guys, just to, just to summarise all that there, you know, we saw how this EV specific tyre, we looked at the features, we saw how the construction, the more solid, uh, stiff construction of the tyre, tread design, uh, and features there combined to give you a low rolling resistance tyre um, which, which helps with efficiency and we saw some features there that help the, the wear life of the tyre and the performance and handling of the tyre as well to cope with the extra performance and extra weight of an EV and I really hope that you know, this, this helps you now, you've learned something from this and it will help you make a more informed decision when you go shopping for tyres because they're often overlooked uh, but they are very important and it's important that you make a, a, a good informed choice, uh, tyre choice for your car. And EVs, I think that's much more important and hopefully you can see that with, with what I've explained today comparing these two tyres. I hope you can appreciate that a bit more. 
Uh, I definitely wouldn't be fitting a, 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 a non-EV specific tyre to my car um, after, after seeing this. So yeah guys, if you've got any questions or if you've got anything to add or any, yeah, just any questions, um, feel free to comment. Uh, you know I'm happy to respond and I respond to every comment and I'm, I'm happy to have some discussions there that everyone can benefit from. So once again, thanks for sitting through one of my long videos and uh, yeah, I'll catch you next video. Thanks.